So, dude. So I always build my uh, drones, like I design the frame and then I always forget that I still have to design landing gear and it drives me crazy. So this is my first attempt at landing gear. Um, I hate it. Imagine you order a piece of art. You pay a lot of money for it. You like it in the gallery and then it shows up at your front door and you get it and it's inside of this big ugly wooden crate and then you realize that the wooden crate is a part of the art piece. That's kind of what I feel like with this. It feels like my big aluminum landing gear is the stupid ugly wooden crate that my art piece is encased in. So let me back up a little bit. About a week ago, I was trying to decide how am I going to make landing gear? Um, and so I turned to Reddit and I got some interesting ideas, let me tell you. Okay, so here we are. Um, I basically just said, hey, I'm trying to come up with the landing gear design for this drone. Oh, and by the way, spoiler alert, don't count the number of propellers because it's more than I've been showing all along. So the award for the most upvotes goes to another 24 Tiger, just hand launch. Why didn't I think of that? Um, this is the, the person that tried to help out the most genuinely, uh, and they suggested putting some triangles on four corners across these, I don't even know what to call them, the braces. Um, so like one, two, three, four, and just do triangles going down. So that was a great idea. Um, I don't have like a bunch of stuff, a bunch of materials to do that with right now. Um, and I'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible and use the stuff that I have. So maybe uh, in the near future, I'll do something a little bit more pretty like that. And then of course, a shout out goes to Moist Leggings. They said, ha ha, this thing looks ridiculous. What's the goal here, airlifting horses? Uh, it, it's big, I know. <laughs> However, this was my favorite suggestion out of all of them. Mannequin legs with Converse Chuck 70 shoes. I think that would look amazing. And uh, Pekta, I'm going to take that idea at some point. Um, you're probably not even watching this video, but I love it so much. I'm going to build a drone with those one day. But the person I drew the most inspiration from was actually this guy, Jap the Cool, who said, I'd suggest tending for a rather simple and sturdy landing gear than an overly engineered one. Then he suggested connecting the triangles that the other guy recommended putting on here. He said, you don't wanna have too many failures in this thinking of how expensive even one prop is. And that is absolutely correct. So that got me thinking, um, basically just kind of imagining that I need to build almost like a cage around this thing. Uh, because, and the reason that I threw the motors and propellers on here to talk about this is just to kind of demonstrate that I do have downward facing propellers, um, or at least propellers below the arms that I need to keep off the ground. And if I have a wonky landing, I don't want them to have any kind of risk of touching the ground and, and breaking something. Um, and don't worry, very soon I'm gonna talk about the motors and the propellers that I'm using here. Uh, that's coming up in a later video. So, like I said, I wanna use materials that I already have. I have a bunch of 3D printer filament and I have all this aluminum tubing. So these are actually six foot lengths of aluminum. They're actually the, let's see, I'm just gonna leave this here. Uh, I hope you can see the whole thing. This is, I mean, you, you know what it looks like. This is my frame from the previous build, the aluminum. A uh, flying car frame. And these are six foot uh, lengths of aluminum tubing, one square inch aluminum tubing. Now I originally built this frame out of these tubes that I currently have installed as the landing gear, but I had, as you can imagine, a bunch of vibration issues um, with this aluminum tubing that came straight from Home Depot, which is less than one and a half millimeters thick. Um, meaning the wall thickness of the, the tubing is less than a, one and a half millimeters. I rebuilt it with some specialty aluminum tubing that was the same outer diameter, but, but this is almost four millimeters thick of aluminum. So all of you guys who were saying that my aluminum is too flimsy, um, yeah, like it still kind of was, but this is super thick aluminum, and uh, which also makes it really, really heavy. And it did actually reduce the vibrations dramatically. So that's where the idea came from to make this landing gear. Now let me tell you why I'm not going to use it. And first of all, let me clarify, because I haven't really done this yet. This was never intended to be a permanent, permanently affixed landing gear. This was just for testing. Um, and while I'm on the topic of testing, a lot of you guys in my comments have expressed concern 
over the amount of 3D printed parts that I have holding this whole thing together. And uh, you're right to be concerned. As I said in my very first video, these parts are only here for testing purposes and kind of to rapidly prototype this whole assembly and see what it's going to look like. Because I work best with my hands, so I have to create it and see it before I can make adjustments. And I do actually believe that these 3D printed parts will hold it together just fine for the first test flight with absolutely no weight on it. Because it is quite sturdy. Probably looks stupid doing that, but whatever. I'm just, it's, it's really sturdy. Um, and yeah, this is all just 3D printed. But like I said in my first video when I revealed this build, the 3D printed parts are only temporary until I can get something more permanent and stronger like carbon fiber or fiberglass plates or even potentially aluminum, um, which I'll have to probably see and see because that's a lot of holes to drill by hand and they just won't be that precise. So ultimately the reason that I didn't even finish assembling this thing, this uh, landing gear, I've been referring to it in my head as training wheels. So I'm just gonna call it training wheels. Ultimately, the reason that I didn't finish my training wheels is that these brackets down here to mount the aluminum tubing coming down from the drone and connecting it to the uh, training wheels, I guess. I can't get that angle right. Um, I could model it in Fusion 360, but that's just a lot of parts to model, especially considering that all of these are bent because of how many crashes I crashed my flying car thing. And so they're all warped. So I can't create a real model unless I go to Home Depot and buy four more of these $40 eight foot long tubes. They're eight feet from Home Depot, but I cut them to six feet here. So I literally made everything except for the, the angle mounting brackets and stood it up and looked at it and pulled up a picture of a 70 degree angle and a 65 degree angle on my phone and sat back and looked at it and just compared it on my phone. And it looked really close to 70 degrees. So I made a 70 degree bracket and uh, that was not enough of an angle. So then I made a 65 degree bracket and that is too much of an angle. So I have them held in place with zip ties so the whole thing doesn't fall down. And I stopped my 3D printers after making these two because it takes seven hours a piece um, because I was printing them with really specific settings for uh, to maximize the structural integrity. So that's why these two don't even have brackets on them and those two don't have like the outer brackets on them. So yeah, it's incomplete. Um, and this is the last you'll see of my training wheels. And I've really been racking my brain over this landing gear issue, I finally came up with something that I think is going to be just fine. It will be so much prettier and it'll be much more structurally sound than this too. Um, but I'll reveal that in a different video because I'm trying to stick to a weekly schedule and uh, this is all I came up with this week and it's a big load of garbage. Anyway, I guess that's all I've got. Thanks for listening to my rant. All right, see you later.